Ah, Hilda is such a cozy show. Like hot cocoa on a snowy day cozy. It's just... Yes. Welcome to my sarcastic summary on Hilda, the Netflix show based on a children's graphic novel by Luke Pearson, who released his first book when he was only 23. Which is terrible, because I'm 24. The series centers around a young girl named Hilda, obvious enough, who could be anywhere from 5 to 12. Repping a 17-year-old voice actor, who also happens to be Liana Mormont. No, seriously. <sighs> it was nice to meet you properly. I think we've had enough small talk. Why are you here? The show has us follow Hilda on her magical experiences befriending creatures and dealing with other kinds of mischief, while learning a little bit about herself, the creatures, and the local customs along the way. A truly magical series that I am happy to be bringing you today. And I hope you all enjoy my summary of Hilda, or as I prefer to call it, Paganism for Kids. Episode 1, The Hidden People are shaming you. We begin this critical darling with plucky Hilda braving blistering winds to draw a non-phallic rock. It's just a troll, you see, and they turn to stone in the sunlight, making them every introvert's reality. Giant monsters go bump in the night, chasing call the CPS Hilda, making it home before realizing a bat in the belfry wasn't supposed to be literal, and she helps out the troll and everything is okay. This sets up the main theme on how monsters are just misunderstood or have just cause for their actions. Except the Mara, they're just dicks. At home, we meet Hilda's mother, who is named... Joanna. Mommy Dearest has raised Hilda in their family cabin, away from everything, which is a wonderful place for a child. It's fine though. Hilda got a wild animal for a pet. It's just good parenting. But things aren't as pleasant as they seem between the nosy neighbors, like the woodman, who is not a deku scrub, who always walks in unannounced, or the invisible elves, who are trying to evict them via poltergeist. Not at all happy with her service, Hilda writes a very stern letter to them, demanding that they settle their differences, and it is only then greeted later in the night with some mysterious terms and agreements she breezes through. Signing the papers, she meets Alfer. Alfer? Alfer. The Reddit icon given life. Elves in this world are intangible and invisible to everyone, unless you sign the form. Meaning Hilda has been unknowingly breaking and entering every time she steps outside her house. Wanting to make the situation better, she works her way through the chain of command. It's out of my hands! Out of your hands? Yes! Eating wabbit season and hearing the realest statement on politics ever. Only said I'd get rid of you because I knew I'd get elected if I did. It's nothing personal. So politicians can't help? So we have a quick scene of adorable depression. They pick themselves up, then we roll credits. Episode 2, The Midnight Metaphor. On Edge, Hilda doesn't want to move into the city, and she's terrified one more bad thing will cause her mom to pack it all up and move. But when a new mystery giant pops in, she sidetracks herself to have a chat. Ex giant explains that he was waiting for someone who hasn't shown up to the date. Hilda thinks he's been stood up and tells him to move on with his life. Great advice that she's ignoring as a trip to the small town of Trollberg confirms her worst fears. That's not the forest which is the basis for her entire reaction. Unimpressed with modernity, or kids that live their life in fear of bells, she's against all of it. You know, she and the Grinch would get along swimmingly. Back at home, Hilda makes her argument for why she should stay. But he's like part of our family. No, I'm not. Stalking the woodsman back home, she borrows a book to learn about the giant. Giants once roamed the earth till the world got smaller, reflecting our greater understanding of it, making its great mysteries and unknown qualities known. Giants were terrorized by humans, causing them all to disappear. No one knows where they went. Some say they all just jumped as high as they could and drifted off into space. Isn't folklore fun? The giant Hilda met never got the memo as he was on watch duty, but Alfer pops back in to remind us that we have another plot to tidy up. Climbing up a giant mountain, she talks to the king who is all for letting expectations of others lead the world to destruction. But ignore that, cause the giant mountain is actually a giant woman. A giant woman! Zip it! Saving the monarchy, Hilda nearly has an awkward I told your man to leave conversation, but the giant is still here and they're still in love. The king decides now is not the time to start a war with a little girl, agreeing to let Hilda and her mom stay. Oh! The house! They haven't even noticed. 
notice what they've done. Just hold on that for the hypocrisy to set in, and we're good. So Hilda leaves the forest and says goodbye to her home and her fre sing friend, the giants. <laughs> that happens. And we settle in for the new status quo. It's more interesting than the woods we left, but it's also kind of depressing. Episode three, the bird is the word. What problems Hilda is doing her best to ignore reality with her dear Fox and Arthur, who is tagging along because cute, but errands exist to ruin children's lives, getting her dragged out of the house and around town. Her mother utilizes mom pressure to get Hilda to hang with the other kids. It goes okay, with them not immediately trying to burn her at the stake, which is always a good sign. Teaching her new city games that are harmless till we get to throwing rocks. One particularly foul friend can talk, and only Hilda and the popular boy hear it. Running away with the weird-faced bird, no more weirdness mom is being very inconsiderate of Blue Hilda's alternative lifestyle, dragging her daughter away from helping the talking bird with amnesia. And dumping the bird out of the house. She didn't know he could talk, but still, not cool, bro. Future hippie Hilda is forced to attend a local festival about a bird passing over a parade, bringing good luck, which is the bird in question, who's with definitely a narc Alther, till he's kidnapped by the popular kid who wants to prove to his friends he's not crazy and not to remove him from the top of the totem pole. This doesn't go well, and the bird falls into the river. But it was obvious Hilda put two and two together, getting the great hoopla to remember who he was. Kidnapping Hilda for a spin? We get a lesson on how local traditions form, with two coincidences creating and reinforcing a local myth, when really, the talking bird is just a talking bird. It's harmless, and he doesn't mind flying over the town if it makes everyone happy. Hilda and Mom bond over the parade, and helping this little girl realize that there might be more to this urban living than she thought. Episode 4, Sparrow Scouts and the Double Take. Because Mom told me to, Hilda is joining the Sparrow Scouts, which is probably a step down from her wild living she's used to. But taking the oath, she joins the team and gets partnered with Try Hard Frida and would have been you, David. They're trying to get a badge for cleaning public property, starting out by going extra hard, clearing the land and ripping out some smelly roots, even further past that extra mile by bringing all their waste to the mulch site calling it a night, but by morning, the site is trashed by this guy. Did you dig up my friends? Wait, play that back. Did you dig up my friends? Again. Did you dig up my friends? How is that not Gilbert Godfrey? So this angry root person is pissed his friends were stolen during their winter nap. Kidnapping a child, they run around the tunnels featuring cows, cow artists, and this guy having a cow. He agrees to give Frida back if they give him back his friends. He then immediately gives back Frida. Kind of undercutting your bargaining power there, man. But Hilda doesn't break her promise and runs back to the plant where they save the plant friends. We don't get the exact emotional ending you'd expect. You pulled up my friends in the first place, so don't expect a prize just for bringing them back. But more importantly, Hilda has friends now. Episode 5, The Trolls Rock. Parent-teacher night, energetic Hilda finds out that she isn't the teacher's favorite because educational system broke, projector breaks, and Tiny David's Rock is actually a baby troll, explaining that the law says that anyone who brings a troll gets 50 years in prison, which they immediately assume would happen to David, but they're 11, so let it happen. And something I've been made aware of is that people don't like Frida. I mean, I get why some might say that. I mean, she has a very strong goal-oriented sure mindset. That Frida's math score has slipped. Tiger parents, got it. Kids can't get that thing back and are making a huge mess. Baby Troll goes on a rampage while still somehow avoiding everyone. We could watch this entire chase scene, but non-conformist Hilda gets caught by the teacher, who tells the mom she wants to put Hilda in the special needs class. Which, take my word for it, isn't that bad. Support mom kicks in, telling the teacher her daughter's fine. She's making friends and adjusting to life. That's what's really important. Troll parent is in town also, and looking for her kid. Children are wiser Hilda finally gets the kid and de-escalates by giving the kid back, who leaves peacefully but not before vandalizing a statue dedicated to a guy who killed lots of people, which is most statues. Episode 6, The Nightmare Gossips. 
This episode's Monsters of the Week are teenagers. Little bitch boy David is crying about his scary dreams where nightmare fuel Hilda gets him killed. So Hilda the human tries to rectify this by nearly getting him killed. Taking a trip to the sewer, they run into the Gossip King, who trades them one secret for another. With the reveal that a random teen girl is the cause of David's dream, this is a Mara, nightmare ghost things that cause bad dreams so that they can go show off to their other ghost thing friends and pretend that their life isn't falling apart. Pulling the old switcheroo, the Mara gets belted and Fearless Hilda challenges the ghost girl to a dream off, where if she doesn't get scared, they'll stop bugging Bug Boy. Sleep battle is on, with superhuman Hilda being immune to all the traditional scares, requiring the ghost to try a different tactic, emotional abuse. Because Hilda Skywalker can't ride a bike and is scared about her friends leaving her. David decides to do something completely out of character by being brave, saving his friend from more trauma. This brave display gets the teen to back off because bullies don't like non-easy targets. Hilda asks her friend to show her how to ride a bike, which suddenly makes a lot of sense once you realize how few roads there are in the forest. Episode 7, The Lost Homework. Welcome to the Arthur episode. Sparrow Scouts are out and looking for the next mundane badge to earn. This one is plant collecting. This fetch quest brings us to more elves. These paperwork demons are lost clan of elves that Where's My Plushy Arthur has a story on. So, savage elves have damsel David and the only way to get him back is to find a loophole in the contract that screwed over their ancestors because of a missing signature. Looking through it, they find out they need to have a lid worm burn it. The field trip forces them to hitch a ride with a water elemental. Everything exists in this world, just <laughs> deal with it. Which brings them to their contract burning dragon, who is very annoyed at all the elves trying to worm their way out of a deal. Okay, that makes sense now. Doesn't happen at first, but they're able to trade those weeds they picked up earlier. Thank you, Chekhov's gun. Destroying the contract, and the elves can now return to society. But then they realize that they like their simpler, more bearded lifestyle and are cool with their current house, where violence solves everything. Rich man Arthur gets the land, and they all agree to never mention this episode again. Episode eight, the tied me over till the finale. There's a play, David can sing, But he's so nervous and prone to bad luck that he always botches his performance. Hilda Wonderchild has decided to help her meek, dot-eyed friend. Hitting up the library where Tamri from Gravity Falls works on the side, possible witch Hilda discovers a magic room which normal people shouldn't be able to find. Taking a magic book that promises a spell to grant people good luck, she makes the mistake of not copying the other page, which will only lead to disaster. She also visits her mom, who's going through a graphic designer dry spell and having to work at a grocery store. Oh man, that is way too real. Now perfect color scheme Hilda does the thing and makes an invisible lucky mouse that lets David blow his pipes. Happy with her success, Hilda pushes the boundaries by giving her mom a mouse as well, who is then drowning in work that she loves. Every creator's dream. Good, good, good. Side effects are kicking in. You're stealing their souls. Oh, that is not good. So to break the spell, they need her to declare a certain phrase. With vigor. Having to do it during David's big number, which thankfully is less embarrassing than you'd expect. Because I don't cringe nearly as much as I usually do at these things. Hilda is draining her people's souls, but after nearly killing her friends, she breaks a spell. And everyone calls it a day with sandwiches. Cause witches were what this was all about. Episode 9, The Ghost Cleaner. Neat Freak Frida is having trouble with her room mysteriously being trashed. After cleaning it up, they realize a book is missing, which doesn't seem too important at first. Pulling a paranormal activity, they film Frida in her sleep. No, she's not possessed. Turns out the real mystery here is that she's had a ghost that hasn't been trashing her room. She's had a ghost that's been cleaning her room for years. The perfectionist Seago takes a fat hit and beginning some serious angst, damaging her presidential bid and grades, heading to the library where they find out where the last person who owned Frida's book is buried. Plot 572 of St. Guglo Cemetery. You've memorized every grave. Heading down to the graves, the ghost explains that he would reread his old book every night, then clean Frida's room as thanks. He stopped coming because of the book's disappearance. This they blame on his sibling, who takes offense at those true accusations. Wrestling match is used to decide who gets the book. This shreds what little self-image Frida had, and Hilda has to lock the ghost out of its own grave to get the book back. Only problem, it's not the right book. Leaving Frida without an unliving house cleaner, and the self-doubt to boost. Harsh words are said. Fine. 
Sorry I ever tried to help. I'm sorry you ever moved here. David gets the line of the episode. You could just learn to tidy your own room. Oh, that was... That felt so good. Episode 10, The Storm is kind of boring. They go to a weather lab that makes weather, massive storm, powered by a heated debate of wind spirits. After moderator Hilda saved the day, she realized the scientist was evil, stole one of their babies. It's a repeat of the troll episode. But Hilda's back in the woods now, so this should be pretty fun. Episode 11, the house in the not creepy woods. Lost girl Hilda is back in her beloved woods with no idea where she is. Wandering around, she runs into her old mooch, who sucks at card games. Not going home till he wins, he bets Hilda on a bad hand, and she's now the property of a who's now the property of a forest giant who has a bit of an inferiority complex. Taking her to his hoard, he's a bit lost without the instruction manual. The woodman reveals this is all part of his heist episode to steal his stuff back. Making a hasty retreat, they run into a cabin where they find out they can't leave. But it will give them everything they want, making it my paradise. Alpha and the deer fox get elf mail telling them where to find Hilda, thanks to a friendly gambler. Backtracking the message, Alpha is able to win her location, and eventually makes it to the house. They're all trapped, but they do the old wish for more than a nightmare contraption can make, which fails. Because it turns out thinking of random things on the spot is actually pretty hard. So Hilda wishes for a way home and... <laughs> Deku tells Hilda that you can take the girl out of the woods, but you can't take the woods out of the girl, and then makes passive-aggressive marks as he leaves. Episode 12, the Nisei Allegory Time. So homeless people, everyone sees them, most ignore them. This show made an episode about them. Sparrow Scouts are going on their annual camping trip. Excitement, disappointment, as Frida has started hanging out with another white girl. KND Teen is shaming Frida into not hanging out with Hilda, leaving them on a still bad note after the last one. You could just learn to tidy your own Room. Needs to draw the line somewhere mom keeps hearing about some black beast stalking the woods, making her a bit hesitant to let Doom Magnet Hilda out of her sight. We also meet the homeless niece, spirits that live in the hidden space of houses. Mom says not to go near him, being homeless must be their own fault. Next day, Hilda again tries to reach out to Frida before she goes full teen. You never want to go full teen, or child, or adult. In fact, stop trying to be anything society defines you as, as those are usual BS labels anyway. Except pedophiles. Y'all earn that shit and you can get the fuck out. Teen plays bouncer and is holding Frida in an increasingly abusive relationship. Outside sad girl, Hilda meets the niece Tantu. This bearded gnome says he was framed and he's a good house elf. One bad idea, Hilda invites him to live in her home, thinking that she doesn't have one already. She does. Place gets trashed and the poor little guy gets blamed when Hilda's mom thinks her daughter brought a homeless person to live with them. I get where she's coming from, but still. Rage quitting mom ships Hilda off to the camping trip so she can say bad words and smoke guilt free. In the woods, Hilda and Plus One find Earthbound Tantu, again, but later get lost in the woods. But they do find Frida, who's with her new teen slash Mara friend. I guess all teens really are monsters, literally. Tintin David grows a spine standing up to the witches and basically telling Frida to have better standards. Also, I just had to make this. What's scary about a sad bunch of with nothing better to do than around being nasty about people behind their <laughs> He's so adorable when he's dropping F-bombs. Also, the beast is here. Episode 13, The Black Hound. Hilda finds a dog and lets a homeless person sleep by her bed. Guts chases Hilda for all of one minute, then disappears. Hilda and Frida are friends again, and the gayest little relationship is back on track, with them planning to help Tantu, only to discover that this city has a massive homeless problem, which everyone has been ignoring. Turns out the dog is a Bargast, fantasy beast, all you need to know, that has been popping into houses with subspace. The beast destroys everything, making it look like the niece did it, who are just as confused as everyone else. Knocking on the door to confirm this story, Hilda runs into Frida's former friend, who is also a teen, with a family? Wait, I thought they were spirits. Like, they're actually teenagers? Someone can you explain this to me in the comments? Is there like a power cutoff here? When they turn 18, they lose their stuff, or is this just an adaption thing? Finding ungrateful Tantu, who is meh about everything? What? This is what I look like when I'm grateful. But Hilda has to run to her bad ceremony. She has earned none, and her mom is ready to throw hands over it. Thankfully, the Vargas is in the building, and Tantu drags Hilda through subspace to avoid it, even finding Freya's book in the process, because... Might as well solve that now. 
retreating to her house with the soft resolution that the dog was just a lost puppy looking for its owner, which just so happens to be Hilda's niece. Nice? Okay guys, I can't pronounce this name, I'm sorry. Jellybean the murder dog spits out its victims, and when the fancy cops show up, who are you gonna call? Your mom, who listens to her daughter and becomes the getaway driver. They all nearly die in the void, but all's well that ends well because Hilda's house now has a vacancy and Tantu is living with them now. Hilda finally got her own badge and everyone gets to live happily till next season. Yo, thank you all for watching. Hope you liked the video. If you did, like, share, and subscribe. Tell me, what was your favorite part of Hilda? Because for me, honestly, it's the Woodman. He just gets me every single time. Any engagement is good engagement because the algorithm has been kind of trying to bury me lately. So all help is appreciated. But hope you all had a good one. Peace out, friends. And remember, you survived 2020. You're not doing that bad.